हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू मेक मेडिकल इजी आई एम शिखन्ना चक्रवर्ती स्टूडेंट ऑफ थर्ड प्रॉफ पार्ट वन ऑफ बाकुरा शमलेनी मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड हॉस्पिटल टुडे आवर टॉपिक इज रेनल फार्माकोलॉजी बट बिफोर आई स्टार्टेड आई वांट टू मेक वन थिंग वेरी क्लियर इज दैट प्लीज डोंट मग अप एवरीथिंग दैट इज रिटन इन द बुक्स और इन द पी प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड ईच एंड एवरी लाइन एंड देन ऑनली फार्माकोलॉजी विद बी केक वर्क फॉर यू Diuretics. What are these? These are drugs which cause a net loss of sodium and water in urine. These increase urine formation and increase excretion of water from the body. Did you know that the tea and coffee that we drink every day are also diuretics? There are actually several categories of diuretics. Classification. Diuretics are classified as one high saline or loop diuretics. Second, thiazides. Third, carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Four, potassium sparing diuretics, and five, osmotic diuretics. Among all these, loop diuretics and thiazides are the most important one, and most of the questions will be coming from these two only. And today also we will study loop diuretics and thiazides. Now this is a picture of a nephron which is divided into two parts. One is the cortex, another is the medulla. The cortex part is which is away from the hilum of the kidney, and the medullary part is closer to the hilum of the kidney. As you can see, there are lot of diuretics such as carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, and its site of action is at PCT, that is proximal convoluted tubules. Thiazides. Its site of action is distal convoluted tubules, early distal convoluted tubules, to be accurate. And potassium sparing diuretics. Its site of action is at late distal convoluted tubules and cortical portion of the collecting duct. And loop diuretics. Its site of action is TAL or thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Now, as you have noticed that carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, thiazides, potassium sparing diuretics, they all work at the cortical cortical part of the nephron. Whereas the loop diuretics is the only diuretic which is working at the medullary part of the nephron. So it is a very important point. So remember it. Also, it is a very easy diagram, so I believe you all can make this diagram in your answer sheet as well, so that it would carry extra marks for you. Loop diuretics. These are high efficacy diuretics. What does it mean? It means that they are the most effective ones. It can be of two types: sulfamoyl derivatives. They are furosemide, bumetanide, tosemide, and phenoxyacetic acid derivatives, ethacrylic acid. Among these, furosemide is the most important one. Please do not forget the name. Loop diuretics site of action. The site of action is thick ascending limb of loop of Henle. Mechanism. By which, by how it actually works. It has two mechanisms of action. Okay, the first one is inhibition of the sodium potassium two chloride minus symporter. It actually causes reduction in positive luminal potential. Positive luminal potential actually helps in reabsorption of various ions such as sodium, magnesium, and calcium. As it causes reduction in positive luminal potential, sodium, magnesium, calcium reabsorption is hampered. Second is increased in production of prostaglandins. As we all know, prostaglandins are vasodilators, so renal vascular resistance reduces and renal blood flow increases. Loop diuretics and its effect on urine. It causes increased excretion of all ions: sodium, chloride, potassium, H plus, magnesium, calcium. Furosemide also causes excretion of bicarbonate ions. It is also a weak carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. It is again an important point. Furosemide is a weak carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Effect on plasma: hypokalemia. What does hypokalemia mean? Hypokalemia means decreased potassium concentration in blood. Loop diuretic causes increased excretion of potassium in the urine and therefore produces hypokalemia. Hypochloremic alkalosis. Hypochloremia means decreased chloride concentration in blood. Loop diuretic causes increased excretion of chloride ions and therefore produces hypochloremia, which further causes electrolyte imbalance and give rise to alkalosis. Indications for loop diuretic: one is edema. 
இடிமா கேன் பி டியூ டு டிஃப் வேரியஸ் காசஸ் கொஞ்ச லைக் கன்ஜஸ்டிவ் ஹார்ட் ஃபெயிலியர் அக்யூட் பல்மனரி இடிமா அண்ட் சிரோசிஸ் லூப் டயூரேட்டிக் இஸ் அ ட்ரக் ஆஃப் சாய்ஸ் ஃபார் இடிமா டியூ டு கன்ஜஸ்டிவ் ஹார்ட் ஃபெயிலியர் அக்யூட் பல்மனரி இடிமா அண்ட் சிரோசிஸ் டூ இஸ் ஹைப்பர் கல்சீனியா ஆஸ் வி ஆல் நோ லூப் டயூரேட்டிக் காசஸ் இன்க்ரீஸ்ட் எக்ஸ்ட்ரேஷன் ஆஃப் கேல்சியம் அண்ட் இன் த யூரின்ஸ் and it produces hypocalcemia so it can be used for treatment of hypercalcemia so it is another indication third is forced diuresis fourth is hypertension though loop diuretics is very very rarely used in hypertension as we have better anti hypertensive drugs pharmacokinetics of furosemide as i have mentioned earlier that furosemide is a very important drug and it may come as a short note so you need to know about its pharmacokinetics and you should be able to write it in your answer sheet as well absorption it is it has a good oral absorption distribution it crosses placenta the protein binding is very high 90 to 99% metabolism minimal hepatic metabolism and excretion is via kidney by tubular secretion side effects of loop diuretics now this channel the sodium potassium 2 chloride minus symbotor do you think it is only present in kidney absolutely not the sodium potassium 2 chloride minus symbotor is also present in our inner ear inner ear helps in hearing and maintaining balance so loop diuretic not just inhibits the sodium potassium 2 chloride minus symbotor in the kidney it also inhibits sodium potassium 2 chloride minus symbotor in the inner ear as well and that is why it is a very important toxic drug second is hypokalemia as i have mentioned loop diuretic causes increase excretion of potassium and causes hypokalemia it for it can further cause cardiac arrhythmias third is hypocalcemia and hypomagne fourth is hypomagnesemia these two have the same reasons actually it causes increased excretion of both calcium and magnesium ions and therefore causes hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia fifth is excess volume depletion of course as it is causing increased production of urine therefore it ha- there has to be volume depletion right so fifth five fifth one is excess volume depletion and sixth one is hyperuricemia thiazide diuretics these are medium efficacy diuretics but you may ask me as we have the very powerful one loop diuretics why do we need it we actually need it and i will tell you the reason later it can be of two types benzothiazides hydrochlorothiazide benzothiazide or thiazide like chlorothalidone metolazone indapamide you just need to remember the names hydrochlorothiazide chlorothalidone metolazone indapamide thiazides site of action early distal convoluted tubules mechanism 1 inhibition of the sodium chloride co-transporter in early dct and 2 opening of the potassium channel however the number 2 function is a very minor and the number 1 inhibition of the sodium chloride transporter is a primary one effect loss of water as urine of course as it is causing inhibition of the sodium chloride co-transporter it is causing increased excretion of sodium ion and as we all know water follows sodium so there is loss of water as urine two excretion of various ions sodium potassium h plus magnesium just like di- just like loop diuretics and the third is stimulate reabsorption of calcium however it is very different as we all know loop diuretic causes hypocalcemia but thiazide causes hypercalcemia this is very important please note it thiazide hydrochlorothiazide as i have said hydrochlorothiazide is an important drug so you need to remember the pharmacokinetics a little bit absorption good oral bioavailability distribution bound to plasma proteins metab- metabolism minimally metabolized excretion is uh, secreted by organic anion transporter in pct thiazide therapeutic uses hypertension 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 is actually the very important one okay how does it manage hypertension one reducing the circulatory volume of course as it is increasing the urine production it will definitely cause reduction in circulatory volume the second one is vasodilation due to opening of the potassium channels in the blood vessels these two are the main points 
and also it is the most preferred diuretic for hypertension there are better anti hypertensive drugs drugs but among diuretics it is the most preferred one second is congestive heart failure as we know it increases the production of urine it it increases amount of urine so of course it reduces circulatory volume and therefore it reduces workload on heart so it is it is good for the symptomatic relief in congestive heart failure third now this is a very very important therapeutic use of thiazide as we all know that thiazide is a diuretic right but in nephrogeny diabetes insipidus patients it has a paradoxical it means opposite anti diuretic function wow this is amazing now how it actually it happens you see in ndi patients hypotonic urine is produced it means that more water excretion occurs compared to sodium excretion but as we know that thiazide blocks sodium chloride cos transporter in the early dct so it what it actually causes is is that it increases sodium excretion as compared to water excretion so therefore it produce it produces isotonic urine and therefore there is isotonic fluid loss and so the tubular glomerular feedback gets activated the gfr decreases and this decrease is compensated by increase in proximal tubule sodium and water intake and thereby thiazide reduces polyuria and this is how it has a paradoxical anti diuretic function thiazide side effect the first one is of course electrolyte imbalance that is hyponatremia hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis hypochloremia the second are the second ones are hypercalcemia and hyperuricemia as i have mentioned before it causes increased reabsorption of calcium ion and therefore it causes hypercalcemia and it also causes hyperuricemia second is hyperglycemia and third is hyperlipidemia due to increase in ldl total cholesterol and triglyceride levels thiazide side effects fourth is hypotension it however not so very common fifth is cardiac arrhythmia due to hypokalemia as again it causes hypokalemia by by increasing cash by increasing potassium excretion in the urine so it causes it is causing cardiac arrhythmia due to hypokalemia and sixth is hypersensitivity to the drug must know topics now as we all know that we have learned loop diuretics and furosemides in a great detail it is really important for you guys to know that it is these two are very important short notes so please prepare these two short notes now mechanism of action thiazides as anti hypertensive agents as i have already mentioned how it is actually helping in thiaz how it is actually helping in managing hypertension you should write that point but just do you think just only writing those two points will be enough absolutely not you will have to start with the introduction what is thiazide you you need to first you need to first write that in the exam that thiazide is a diuretic what is the, what is its site of action what is the mechanism of action you need to la- you need to write a lot of things along with the mechanism of how it is actually managing hypertension so it is very important please note that you need to write a introduction part before actually coming to the answer and this is very important if you want to get really good marks okay now the third one is why thiazide diuretics is preferred to loop diuretics for the treatment of hypertension as we all know that loop diuretics are the high efficacious diuretics right so it causes sudden decrease in circulatory volume and therefore it somehow activates the renal compensatory mechanisms so what happens is that the, 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 this actually doesn't really help in managing hypertension but whereas thiazides cause persistent reduction in circulatory volume like day by day it causes reduction in the circulatory vo- circulatory volume and therefore it helps in hypertension but after prolonged use 
This is a very important part as in loop diuretics there is sudden decrease in circulatory volume there is renal compensatory mechanisms getting activated but in thiazides this is not happening because there is no sudden decrease in circulatory reduction in circulatory volume but there is persistent reduction in circulatory volume which causes which actually helps in managing hypertension after prolonged use and the last one is furosemide is used in acute left ventricular failure as we can see the acute word you know as there, if there is any acute condition we need something which is very powerful or very effective and that's why we all know that loop diuretic is the most effective one so of course furosemide should be used in acute left ventricular failure and another thing is that it also increases prostaglandin right the prostaglandin is a vasodilator it causes it actually increases peripheral pooling of blood which further reduces the venous return and it actually decreases the workload on heart and it causes symptomatic relief in acute left ventricular failure so i hope this is all clear to you guys but if you have any queries please let me know in the comment box and thank you so much for your patience i hope we will meet again very soon goodbye